Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Today we're just taking a quick look at a panel that was wired up by somebody else. Just wanted to kind of look it over. This is going to be a flush mount panel, so it's mounted in the wall. And it is a sub-panel of another panel in the same building. You can see how this is the newer style panel that has the insulators over the hot wires coming into the panel. That way when you turn off your main breaker, everything should be pretty safe, or at least safer, to work on. You don't have these main lugs that are exposed that always have voltage on them, if that makes any sense. The other thing to note is that this panel is being fed by a breaker that is actually smaller than the breaker inside of this panel. This main breaker here is just serves as a disconnect so we can turn this off and shut off the entire panel all at once in a convenient way. Because with the two gauge aluminum wire that is feeding this panel, we can only go up to 90 amps on the breaker that is feeding it. Now as far as I can tell, it looks like they use the 75 degree column for sizing the aluminum service entrance cable that is being used here. If you look at that 75 degree column and go down to 2 gauge aluminum, the maximum amperage is 90 amps. So as far as I can tell, that's the way they sized this particular wire. Now with it being in the 75 degree column, they would have needed to verify that the terminals were marked for both 60 degree and 75 degree ratings on both the breaker where the cables attach as well as the main lugs inside of this sub panel. So even though our breaker in our actual sub panel is 100 amps, uh, that is totally fine that it is being fed by a 90 amp breaker to protect that aluminum 2 gauge wiring that is feeding this entire panel. Anytime you install a sub panel, if you have a larger main breaker, it's totally fine. You can use that as the main disconnect for that panel. As long as you have the proper size breaker that is feeding that wire that feeds the panel, you're golden. Now it looks like they did a really nice job getting this panel mounted in this 2x4 wall as a flush mount panel. Basically the front of the panel is extending out into the room by about a half of an inch or so so that the drywall can go right up against it and the cover will cleanly go over the front of the panel. My personal preference is to put the panel in an area like a mechanical room or something else like that where you can just surface mount the panel. It seems like you have a lot more flexibility for future serviceability as well as pulling new or additional circuits into that panel. It would be pretty difficult to add circuits to this panel after the drywall is completed. I'd love to know what you do most of the time as far as flush mount versus surface mount so hit this poll right at the top of the screen and let me know what is your preferred method or what do you do most. You can see how they brought their wires down through that top plate and you can see that they have two cables going up through the top plate each and then on the center point right there where our main uh, feed is coming through they did use nail plates to protect that cable. They did seal those holes then with some spray foam to prevent air infiltration and probably to meet fire code uh, for sealing off this particular stud cavity. And then within 12 inches of the top of the panel they have another 2x4 that they've nailed going horizontally and they use that to anchor all of their cables stacking a maximum of what looks like two cables per cable staple. The cables then feed into the top of the panel uh, using these plastic connectors. I personally haven't seen these used before but they look like they are a nice way to go. And then inside of the panel the insulation uh, pr comes into the panel a good inch or so it looks like is what they kind of maintained going across. We have a few orange cables over here which are going to be 10 gauge uh, wire. So those are probably all connecting onto what would likely be 30 amp breakers down here. And we do have one, two, 30 amp breakers and one 20 amp breaker for the AC. So what they did there is they oversized the wire. They just ran 10 gauge wire, but then just put a 20 amp breaker for the AC because uh, the air conditioner likely only called for a 20 amp breaker. So you can see on these 10 gauge cables that they brought in here, on the ones that are just 10-2, they redesignated the second wire that was originally white as a hot wire, and they wrapped continuous black tape all the way from where it comes into the panel to where it terminates into the breaker itself. Here we can see what those 220 volt circuits were for, a dryer, a water heater, and that air conditioner like we were just talking about. And then below that were laundry outlets and the bedrooms. So both the laundry outlets and the bedrooms are on uh, 
ground fault and arc fault breakers. This top one is a combination. So this one is ground fault and arc fault. I really like that way of doing it because then you can avoid having to put the ground fault outlets in here. I don't know if this is a temporary outlet, but you can avoid using these all together by having that combination style breaker like they have right here. And then of course the one for the bedrooms is just your standard arc fault breaker. You can see we have the washer, laundry, lights, hall lights, foyer, soffit outlets, living room, bathroom outlets, bathroom lights, mechanical room, and the furnace. So going down every area that needed both ground fault and arc fault protection, they just use these dual function breakers to avoid using those GFCI outlets, which is fantastic, more reliable uh, and less maintenance, generally speaking. And then uh, in this living room circuit, they just used your standard arc fault. And then for the bath, what was that one? For the bathroom outlet, they used a standard breaker, it looks like, either that or they just haven't put one in yet. I did figure out why that bathroom circuit only had a standard breaker on it. It's because they were using that circuit as a temporary outlet for the construction project. So that breaker will in all likelihood be changed for a dual function breaker. And then the only other circuit in here that doesn't require that arc fault breaker is the furnace circuit. So the vast majority of them are required to be those fancy breakers. So you can see that the order that they wired this in, uh, you can kind of see the layers of the way the wires are pulled into the back of the panel. Uh, all of the ground wires were brought in first and pushed way to the back edge and feed into this grounding bar on the right hand side and on the left hand side. They added two of them just to keep the panel extra neat even though they could have probably gotten by with one. Also this sub panel kit may have just come with two grounding bars. Either way they landed their primary ground coming in from the panel that this is being fed from onto this grounding bar on the right hand side as well as an additional ground wire which probably ties into uh, the this concrete work rebar most likely not totally sure what that is for but that would be my guess i followed this ground wire because i was because they didn't tie this into the concrete or the rebar yeah where is it here is where that ground wire actually ends up and i'm not 100% sure, but I'm guessing that the reason they have this here is for bonding the gas line. This is the corrugated stainless steel gas line that is for the furnace, and that is required to be bonded. Uh, this size of copper wire seems a little bit overkill to me. This looks like about a 6 gauge or maybe even 4 gauge, I think 6 gauge, copper wire. Um, but I think that might be what that is for because we are in the same building and that sub panel since it is a sub panel normally wouldn't require a separate grounding electrode to be added to the panel and then so this is kind of our primary grounding bar here on the right hand side and then this grounding bar on the left is just connected to the opposite one just because it's bonded to the frame of this panel so there's no like main wire that goes between this grounding bar and this grounding bar other than the fact that it's just anchored to the steel cabinet on either side. So all the ground wires got pulled in first and tied in and then usually you'll, they'll go circuit by circuit and land their wires. But it looks like they almost brought their neutrals over first and landed those and then brought their hot wires down and landed those. All of these Square D breakers have the plug on neutral version installed in this panel so there are no pigtails coming out of the back side of these breakers that would normally come up and tie into the neutral bus. You can see how there's almost no neutral wires tying onto that neutral bus. That's because the neutral bar comes down right here on the right hand side of where these breakers are and the breakers snap directly onto that neutral and that connection is made automatically when that breaker is installed. If this was a panel from like 10 or 15 years ago, you'd have tons of wires landing up here in these neutral bars. But now almost all of the neutrals land directly on the breakers. I like how they brought their wires over, down, and into wherever the breakers were mounted for that particular circuit. Uh, on a couple of the panels that I've wired before, I've brought the wires down and then back up and in like drip loops to give me a little bit of flexibility and that's not necessarily bad but I like how clean it looks when you bring it down and in and in all reality the likelihood of you needing to move breakers around significantly is fairly low so I think bringing them down and straight in is a good way to go. Obviously you saw that they put all of their 
little tags on the wires to note the different circuits that the wires are going to which is just a good way to make sure you keep track of the wires in your system. So let me know if there are any observations that you made of this particular sub-panel installation. I thought the work looked pretty clean to me, but let me know if there's anything that I missed that you guys picked up on. If you want to see some more panel-related wiring projects, click right over here on this short playlist, and I'll see you over there in just a few seconds. If you haven't already, take a minute and click right down here and subscribe and make sure you turn on notifications so that you get notified when I upload videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you right over there.